Okay, this is a review of angular momentum. I'm just going to go through a couple of sample questions that are kind of similar to stuff the AP exam might ask. So remember, there's two types of angular momentum. There is something that's physically spinning. So this is angular momentum about at the center of it because it's spinning, so literally rotating. But you also have angular momentum. If something has linear motion, it can also have angular momentum about a point. So let's say I have the tip of this pencil here. If this is moving, it does have angular momentum about this point right here because it can cause rotation. So you have two types of angular momentum. You have the linear type, MBR, and you have the rotational type, I omega. So let's get into it. So before going into angular momentum, we're going to look at moment of inertia real quick. So for a single point, if you have a point mass going about some central point it's rotating about, the moment of inertia is MR squared, where M is obviously the mass, and then R is the distance to the pivot point. So up here I have a pivot point here, and then this is R, and then I have this point mass moving at a speed around it. So it has a moment of inertia for that point, which is MR squared. Now for a rotating body, what you have on a rotating body is a bunch of different masses. And if you have a, you know, a solid object that's rotating, it has a bunch of infinitesimally small masses, dm, an infinite number of them, that have a varying distance r away from the center of rotation. So obviously it's a calculus question. You're adding a bunch of infinitely small things. So it's the interval of r squared, where r is a variable, uh, dm. So here's a common thing you should know for physics C, which is how to do the moment of inertia of a rod. So we'll go through that real quick. So this is a rod of length l and it's pivoted a distance of L over 3 from the left end. So with any calculus question, we break this rod up into a bunch of different um, small parts. In this case, there are a bunch of little dms. So there we go. We have a dm here, which has a thickness of dx. It's a distance of x from the pivot point. And then we're going to try to integrate along the length of the rod, which is along the x-axis. We want to integrate with respect to x. So we're going to convert mass into distance with the fact that a dm is density, mass density times dx. And mass density of the rod is the total mass of the rod, which we'll call m, over the total length of the rod, which is l. So dm is m over l dx. And now we integrate. So our bounds for our integral, we have our pivot point here. We'll say the left side is negative, so that's l over 3 on the negative side. And then you have l over 3 on the left, so you have 2 thirds L on the right side. So that's the bound for the integral. And that's a pretty simple integral because m and l are both constants. We pull out the constants and we're just integrating x squared dx. So it's obviously x cubed over 3. And then we just plug in the bounds. And the answer to the moment of inertia is ml squared over 9 for this rod. So then getting into angular momentum, as I said, there's two types. There is when you have an actual object rotating. So this is a disk here, so it's I omega. And then when there's a linear object moving, when you have linear momentum, if you multiply by r, which is the distance of some pivot point, it's the perpendicular distance. So if this is moving, it's going to be a perpendicular distance of r from that pivot point. So the angular momentum at that point is mvr. And then if there's no outside torque, you do have L being conserved. So angular momentum, I omega, is conserved. Let's assume there's no outside torque. Remember, internal forces or internal torques, they can change energy, but they can't change momentum. This is a terrible attempt at a demo showing that I pull my arms in, moment of inertia becomes smaller, so omega, angular velocity, increases. And that was a bad decision. I got dizzy doing that, so I had to lay down and play video games. So do not try demos at home. Example B goes back to the rod from example A. Except for this time, it's, well, it's better at the same place, um, but it's going to be hit by a thing of clay with a mass of m over 4, so one fourth the mass of the rod. And it's going to hit it right here at the end of the rod, and it's going to stick to the rod. So this is a case where we have an angular collision. This is going to be linear angular momentum, so MVR, being converted to when the clay hits the rod, it sticks to the rod, so it becomes part of the rod system. Then we have it spinning, so that's going to be I omega. So we use conservation of angular momentum, Li equals Lf. And then on the left, we have MVR for the clay. It's a point mass, so we have m over 4 times v. Its distance is this distance here, which is 2L over 3. And then plus 0 because the rod's initially not moving. And then after the collision, we have the rod clay system, 
So you have to add eye of the rod and the clay separately because they're part of one system, but they have different moment of inertias that combine together. Times omega, like your combined angular velocity. Okay, so I simplified the left side there. And then on the right side we have, so the rod, this is what we found in example A, that's I for the rod. And then for a point mass, which we're treating the clay as, the moment of inertia is MR squared. So this is the mass. The distance to the pivot point is that, and we square it. And that's what happens when you simplify it on the right side. Now we can just solve for omega. And omega is gonna be 3V over 4L. Part B asks what happens if the clay hits closer to the pivot point, which is right here. Um, would it spin faster or slower? So this is a case where a lot of people think the answer is slower because the initial momentum here, MVR, you would have a smaller value here. So a lot of people will answer that it's gonna decrease. But on um, this question here, the answer is actually that's gonna increase because you're gonna have, yes, you're gonna have less initial momentum, but the moment of inertia of the clay system or the clay rod system is gonna be so much lower because you have this on the right side and you're squaring it. So you'd add all over three instead of two all over three. So when you square it, you're gonna get a really small number. So in this case, it's gonna increase. Okay, another typical AP type question. This is a person or thing on a disc. So this is a guy at the edge of the disc. He's at the center of the disc initially, and he's going to walk out to the edge of the disc. And we're gonna find out what happens to the angular speed of the disc as he does that. This is a case where both sides of the equation are I omega because it's a spinning thing and then a spinning thing again. So again, we use conservation of angular momentum because this is a guy he's walking. This is an internal torque if you consider the guy disc system, which we'll get into later. So you have I omega and I omega. And again, both you have the disc and the guy in both sides of the equation. So they have the same amount of inertia on either side. Now the guy's is gonna increase because he's walking out to the edge of the disc. The disc moment of inertia will not change. So on both sides we have one fmr squared for the disc. The guy, when he's at the center, so the guy's a point mass basically, when he's at the center, his mr squared is zero because he's at the center. He's not adding some moment of inertia when he's at the center of the disc. But when he walks out to the edge, the moment of inertia is gonna increase. And moment of inertia, when you have more mass far from the pivot, that's when the moment of inertia is gonna increase. So you can just go ahead and solve this for omega. And it turns out that the angular velocity goes down to a third of its original value. Okay, part B, does the guy do work on the disc as he's walking? Well, most important questions in, or one of the most important formulas in physics, work equals delta K. Delta K certainly changed. So yes, he did work. He did negative work on the disc. So in that case, the disc slowed down, which means the guy did negative work. Does he exert a torque? Now that one's a bit more complicated. Does he exert a torque on the disc? So there's an internal torque there. So if you have the disc a guy system, there's no external torque. So the momentum is gonna stay the same. Now let's look at just the disc itself. If, the, if you take the guy out of the system, you just think about the disc. Well, the disc slows down. Without the guy, the disc's momentum is gonna decrease. So the guy does exert a torque on it. If you consider the guy an outside force or an outside torque, he does um, exert a torque there. There is an impulse there. If you think about angular impulse, he is applying a torque over time to the disc. He is changing the momentum of the disc. That's something that gets a bit complicated in physics and sort of what's a system, what's not a system. So that's just two questions about angular momentum. We'll look at angular work and energy next. And there we go.